Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Things First. I'm Jenna Wolf alongside Nick Wright, Brandon Marshall, Kevin Wilds, and gentlemen, after a whirlwind of a day yesterday, it looks like we will indeed be crowning an NBA champion after all, just not quite yet. That is our top story this morning. That is where we start. The NBA players have reached a decision to resume the NBA playoffs. There was doubt earlier this week after the Milwaukee Bucks boycotted Game 5 in response to the shooting of Jacob Blake by police in their home state of Wisconsin. The NBA then canceled the remainder of Wednesday's and Thursday's schedules, but yesterday the players voted there will be postseason basketball after all. All right, Nick, what was your reaction to how all of yesterday unfolded? Well, listen, first and foremost, selfishly, I, I'm very glad the NBA is going to resume the season. I, the, and that is nothing to set up apart from what they are working toward, towards and what hopefully a critical mass of our country is working towards in making our nation a little more fair and a little more just. But I, it, speaking for myself and I think for a lot of people, it, one of the few pieces of enjoyment I've gotten in 2020 is watching professional basketball, particularly the playoffs. And we were concerned for months we weren't going to get the playoffs and then to have them and then to potentially have them removed, it would have just been another gut punch in a year that's been full of them. And, and Brandon, I'll, I'll say that's for me, but also for the players. I do think, and they listen, they're very smart people. Michelle Roberts, Chris Paul, LeBron James, everybody in leadership positions knows this, but I don't know if the audience does. If they had walked, the repercussions of that could have been felt for years. It would have voided the CBA, that owners would have almost assuredly locked the players out. We all of a sudden we could be in a position where we weren't just not getting this year's playoffs, we might have been in a position where we weren't getting next year's season. And so while I understand what the players are fighting for, it would have been such a drastic step, and I don't want to call it impulsive, but they would have had to make it so quickly in just a matter of hours from we're playing to we're not playing that I think, I think it's best for the league, the players, and the fans, obviously, Brandon, that the games are coming back. Yeah, Nick, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I was relieved uh, when, I, when the news broke that the NBA was going to return to play. Uh, but for your first point, Nick, uh, I mean, 2020 is hard for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're this big real estate man or woman, uh, you know, powerful person in, in, in business that can travel the world and do so many things. Well, you can't now. You can't travel. You can't go to your favorite restaurants. Like, if I'm being just brutally honest, Life sucks for everyone in 2020. And basketball, yep. sports, entertainment has always been a place to escape. So I was relieved there uh, because we need some place to go. And then I think about this. This is not their job. It is their responsibility to do well with their platform, but it's not their job. There are people, men and women, who get paid to do the things that they're doing now. So I don't like this whole narrative and this whole uh, approach now that, you know, it's the athlete's job, the NFL player, the WNBA player, the NBA player's job. Yeah. Correct, that's not right. This is like, I want them to get back to doing what they love, right? So selfishly, yes, we need that escape, but get back to doing what you love. And then I also thought about this yesterday because uh, one of my ex-teammates, Brian Urlacher, tweeted or sent out an Instagram post mm -hmm. giving his comments on, on, on the current state of our country and what's going on around police brutality. Um, I found myself going down this rabbit hole for the very first time. A lot of people won't believe this, but I've never ever followed any blogs or any type of headlines or any comments that was just negative driven. And, and when, I, when, I, when I went to his page to see if this was the guy that I followed for, for a few years and looked up to, because when I talk about leadership, there's the first person to come to my mind, and the first person I, I talk about is Brian Urlacher and the Chicago Bears, and then it's the New England Patriots. So I, I run to his page, and I read his comment, and then I said, well, this cannot be. This is not the guy I know. 
So I go down to the comment section and I want to say, who is entertaining this? And there was this one guy, I had no clue who he was. I clicked on his page, he had a little blue check. And then I'm following this guy and I'm, I'm reading his things and something disturbing happened for me. I saw literally neighbors, people that live next door to me liking some of these negative driven posts. Posts talking about arm yourselves, kill people. And I'm seeing my ex-teammates like these things. And I'm like, wow, I've never been, I've never needed to be validated before when it came to this because I, I, I live it. I experience it every day, all the time since I was a little boy. So I never needed to follow anyone to hear from anyone to tell me that these things that are happening is true. So for me, this was the very first time that I was actually able to see that I'm living with people, doing life with people that feels differently about that way me. about you. That feel and, that, 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 that don't and, value and that's, you the way you should be valued. Yeah, so, so I'm relieved that the NBA is back, but I also understand the weight of the world being placed on them right now. It's not fair. Um, and, and, and seeing my ex-teammate Brian Orlacher and his comments uh, was very disturbing for me. But it wasn't even about him because I went to another page and I saw this other guy who's, who's making a living off of just these negative comments and these negative posts and seeing ex-teammates and then also neighbors like his, th his things. And this is why I understand why these guys walk yesterday. Sure. Kevin, what was your reaction to everything that happened yesterday? Um, my reaction was one of great empathy and in the same ballpark as Brandon, I was taken aback by some of the comments that I saw online. And one of the things I saw multiple times was, what is this going to do? What is this protest going to do? And I, I had two reactions to that. One, my first reaction was just to dismiss those comments out of hand, that those people should just be written off. If you don't get it, you don't get it, and, and just be written off. And then I thought, my other side was like, well, maybe that is coming from a place of a lack of understanding. And I, and I wanted to illustrate what I think these protests have done, what we know and what we don't know. So what we know, and this goes back to Kaepernick that changed the tenor of policing um, reform around the country. And this is just, and there's countless, this is from American Progress, and there's lots, but I'm just going to illustrate a, a few to make my point. Sacramento City Council approved an inspector general to investigate police misconduct. Washington, D.C. passed legislation, bans the hiring of officers with a history of misconduct. New York City launched a database to track discipline cases. Utah's governor put a ban on chokeholds. Olympia, Washington now dispatches uh, crisis responders to nonviolent situations. So if anyone says, I don't know if any of those things happen without a change in attitude in the country that, of course, is built on uh, the backs of, of Bill Russell and Muhammad Ali, but most recently Colin Kaepernick. So I think those are, are things that we know that we can point to, that if you're in the comment section, these are real things that are happening, and that's why these protests matter. The other part of this is a little bit more of a, a creative uh, thinking exercise. And you're not going to hear anything like this in any other sports show. And it's going to be a little bit weird, but it, I trust you, trust me, if, if you get through this next two minute story, Nick, and I'll use you as a barometer, I think it will help view the, put the protest in a historical sense. Because right now, I said yesterday that these protests were making history, but we're right there. We're, we're, we're 24 hours later, we, we, we're too close to it. We don't know what it is. And Steven Johnson wrote a great book. It's called How We Got to Now. And he has this chapter on clean. And this is where, this is, you gotta follow me here. Chapter on clean describes a cholera outbreak in London. And a guy named Jon Snow, not Jon Snow from Game of Thrones, just a guy named Jon Thro, John Snow. Everybody thought it was in the air. Jon Snow, did some research, was the first uh, epidemiologist, said, you know what, it's not in the air, it's in, it's in water. And he traced it to a water pump and basically solved cholera and helped propel germ theory 
and made clean drinking water the foundation of health. From there, people are like, all right, how do we get clean drinking water? How do we kill bacteria in the water? Okay, we get chlorine. Once you got chlorine, you know what you can get? Swimming pools. And then there's a bunch of swimming pools. There were, there, you didn't have swimming pools, they're called moats. We get a bunch of swimming pools. There's a drought in California. And get Tony Hawk's walking by and said, oh, that swimming pool's drained because there's a drought. I'm going to skateboard in it. So it's a long way of saying the guy who discovered cholera and cured cholera also, in a way, made Tony Hawk skateboard. So the reason why I tell the story is this. We saw a historic moment yesterday, but you have no way of knowing how that historic moment is going to reverberate through That's history. Exactly right. Unless you can tell me exactly what right. my son is going to be in, in 50 years. When we're looking at the TV and says, Dad, why does it say I'm a man? Why does it say education reform? Why does it say say your name? And he's six years old. So unless you can tell me what my son is going to be like and how his life is changing in 60 years old, you can't say that these protests are not doing anything. There's specific legislation happening, and the future is brighter because of what the NBA players did yesterday. Well, A. Wilds, if I'm the barometer, I, I, I give that an A+. Plus. I think it was part of you could follow it perfectly, and I was excited to follow you down the path. That's first of all. Second of all, the, it, I'll tell you what in the, in the micro and then in the macro what yesterday did. Here's what the micro did.